So today's video, it's gonna be a little strange. A little strange, a little odd, but today we are actually gonna be fishing a tournament against nobody. That's right, we're gonna be fishing tournament by ourselves. So let me uh, backtrack. We're in New York. When we first got to New York, we made our way to one of our favorite fisheries. That's only a couple minutes away from me, the beautiful Cayuga Lake. It did not go as planned. It took us three days, count it three days, and over 20 hours to catch five keepers. The good news is at the very end, the last day, the third day, last couple of hours of fishing before a storm rolled in, we found some fish shallow. Last place I thought those fish would be is up in a foot of water in the dead lily pads. I mentioned, had this been practice for an upcoming tournament, well, that would be the spot. Shallow lily pads, frogging, and probably a little punching is where I would commit my tournament deck. Well, why not? Get the boat, come back to Cuga Lake, bring the hog trough, and uh, see what we can get for a best five fish limit, doing what I said I would do if it were to be a tournament. So that is the game plan today. Pretend like we're in a tournament. That's kind of sad, but uh, is what it is. I guess I just like tournament fishing. Let's see what happens. This is interesting. It said sunny skies all day. Not sure how true that is. They have color wrong. First fish of the day. Dude. That took a while, but we finally got one on the frog. Keeper number one. It's a good one too. That's the other reason this area would have been my tournament spot, because we were catching a couple quality fish out of here. Fatties. Alright. Get to measure one today. Couple of photos. 16 and a quarter. It's like a three three pounder. Alright, number one. They're still here. It's funny, I've been fishing that live target frog all morning, throwing a little buzz bait. As soon as I switched over to the one we were actually catching them on the other day, a little booyah pad crasher, got bit. Maybe the frog color, or more specifically, frog size is gonna make a difference today. Again, we are in like, dude, that's like a foot of water. Just did not expect them to be this shallow. Oh man, I was at such a weird angle for that fish. Dude, I'm telling you, that is not the right angle for me to catch a fish, as you can see by that bizarre looking hook set. Can't hurt, right? Little follow-up bait drop shot. Huh. I don't know. Could have been a pickerel. That was 100% a pickerel. You could just tell. See, that's the problem sometimes. You get faked out by all these bites. They'll miss it and they're pickerel. 
they don't really get the frog as good as the bass. And it is strange though. They don't really seem to hit again, which is, I mean, that's so odd. They're such an aggressive fish. Like, why wouldn't they hit again? <laughs> Man, just keeps picking up. <laughs> what a great day for a tournament. Well guys, tournament director called a uh, weather delay. Pretty dangerous winds out there, so uh, he called everyone in. Off the water, one fish. The nice thing about fishing tournaments against yourself is you can you can make these calls. We're not gonna waste our time if we don't have to. It's obviously not a real tournament. Probably something I already should have done uh, was actually give you guys a little bit of a tour of the Slayer 10 that uh, I've been fishing out of in New York. I'm super fortunate to have a fully outfitted boat in New York for me. Obviously I don't have my truck when I'm home so I've got to use the Honda CRV which actually works perfect for the Slayer 10 just like size wise. Like I've mentioned before it is such a breath of fresh air to fish out of a smaller craft that's easier to transport is fully rigged up and just ready to go. I mean I've launched two or three places in a day, no problem, just because literally the only thing I'll have to like manage to load and unload when I'm moving spots is the rods. Yeah, let's just go through it, showcase the boat through the chest camera, but we'll start uh, bow to stern. Uh, starting at the bow, we got the front hatch here. Uh, not too much in here, just uh, some backup stuff, I guess, and storage option. We got the... Uh, bag right here it's where i keep extra gopro stuff extra charging cables fishing license some batteries wallet keys stays nice and dry in here extra bag of soft plastics and then this dry bag right here has got all backup and uh, repair stuff for the boat if anything breaks on the boat anything that could break on the boat we could fix extra cables shear pins we got an extra prop in there so a nice bag to have just in case and then we've got a little uh, medical supply kit in there too i do like to load up the front hatch with at least a few items just to kind of balance the boat out weight wise so definitely keep stuff in the front hatch and like i said it keeps it nice and dry as well if we go to this side right here we've got a little tool caddy kit right here basically three items that we need pretty much on the regular got some pliers some scissors and then we got a multi-tool always have a multi-tool on you and then we've got little fish sticks right here just added some velcro you guys know i love fish sticks especially for frog fishing nice and easy quick access right there on this side of the boat we've got our graph uh we'll talk about that a little more later coming over here We've got the other GoPro. I didn't bring my other mount for the rear camera, so we went with a little panfish portrait here. And this is one of the new panfish portraits. Pretty nice little option from Yak Attack for different angles. It's easy to adjust, of course. You got the ball joints right here. Then you got a little twisty knob here that you can use to change the angle. And then you've got these quick little releases right here that can rotate. So I've had the previous model of the panfish portrait, which was good, but this, this model of the panfish portrait is definitely an upgrade for a camera mount, which is obviously gear track ready. We've got a couple of these throughout the boat. This is a Roto Grip paddle holder. Of course, that one is for the paddle itself. And then the other one here is actually where I just keep my net kind of propped up. I didn't bring the net with me today, but if I did, it would sit like that, just like how I have it in California. So going back to the fish finder, so you saw that the camera over there had some wiring. Not the prettiest in the world, but it's got some wiring kind of going along the side of the boat. Same thing for the graph, wiring along the side of the boat, and it actually goes back here to the battery box, compliments of the wizard. This is a custom made battery box that houses a 30 amp hour Bioeno lithium ion battery. So you can see the fish finders plugged in here, which comes out nice and easy. Then you've got two USBs right here, one of which goes to that front GoPro camera, and then you can use the other one for another camera, charging your phone, anything really. And this is the power button off on simple as that and if we just unplug this the coolest thing about this modification that the wizard did is a quick release thing comes right off and you can see actually we'll just open it up there's our battery if we turn it on 
Got a little meter right there, a little watt meter. And then you just clip to here for the uh, the charging. Been using these BioEno batteries. I mean, that's the only lithium ion battery I own. And they're just quality. They do the job. Never had any issues. I've gone out on this boat four or five times without charging this guy. Using the Graph, using the GoPro. This 30 amp hour handled four eight hour trips, no problem. So that is that. And again, to put it on, tab up. And she's locked in. Just kind of going over some random stuff. Seat risers. These things are killer as these are kind of a aftermarket accessory, but they definitely put you in a better position, especially for using the pedal drive. Pretty simple. I keep below me. Little Tupperware container. Keep a little 3600 box in here. And then just some random stuff I use throughout the day. And that just sits nicely underneath the seat. Oh, for the uh, graph, the transducer, I've got it actually mounted on the landing gear here. That just stays right there. And you can just drop it in, super easy. Gotta go Yak Attack Black Pack. Fits perfect for this kayak. Nothing really exciting in here. Just keep some food, some terminal tackle, some water. I do have a little light in here for the early mornings. A little Velcro. Turn her on and off, helps you in the low light, early morning situations. And I put some Velcro right here, so when you prop that up and you turn it on, it'll shine into your, your black pack. Little stuff like that can make life a little bit easier. Rods, I've got five rod holders on the back. Only can bring five rods with me at a time, which is honestly plenty. Other side, if I were in a tournament, and I guess today I was kind of, <laughs> but this is where I'd put my hog trough. Yeah, not much else to say. Like I mentioned in the description below, I will link all this stuff, uh, especially this, because I'm sure folks are gonna be interested in how to make and assemble this battery box. If you guys do have any more questions on this specific boat or setup, just leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. What a day, what a day, what a day. Probably should go back out, kind of calm down. Yeah, but you know what's gonna happen. As soon as I get back out there, the wind's gonna start to blow again. Anyways, gotta get a little more fish catching action in this video. Can't have one fish catch in this video. That's just sad. So I'll uh, tell you what, I'm gonna load up my stuff. We'll find a new spot and uh, see if we can actually catch a few fish. See you guys in a second. Okay guys, so next morning, we couldn't get back out yesterday, the wind never let up, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it is cold. When I walked out of the house, I immediately went right back in, had to throw on the bibs, the sweater, some gloves. It is like 40 degrees right now. I don't know how that's going to affect the fishing. Uh, I, I have the frog with me. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, it'll warm up throughout the day, but man, it is cold. It feels like fall. Yeah, hopefully today we can have a better day. Tournament director said that we could uh, launch anywhere today just for safety. So we picked the canal. I'm assuming it's going to be better than yesterday, but again, you never know. Let's get it. Here's the million dollar question is what do we even start with? We gotta go top water though. Let's just keep it, gotta remember. Because the air temperature is cold. Dude, I'm on already. Something hit that. Okay, you know you're doing something right when that happens. What? Are we serious? I didn't even move the bait. God, I hope that's not the curse of the first cast. I don't even know what to say right now. That's the pattern, just throw a Sammy out there and let it sit. Oh my goodness. I'm not even ready. Okay. I think that's possibly a sign. <laughs> what just happened? Like I knew it was gonna be cold today. I felt like it was gonna be possibly some fall patterns going on, so that is the reason I brought a walking bait. Just a good fall time lure. We'll see if that continues to prove effective today. Is 
a bite. That's interesting. A couple nibbles on the jig. Those were truly nibbles too, like, like that's a nibble. Oh, there's a bite right there. Dude, that, that's a good one right there. That's a nice fish. Look at that one. That is a fat fall bass right there for you. <laughs> Big jig, chunky bass. Sadly though, he's not very long. If we were to measure him, and we're not guys, we're not in a tournament. It's only a 13 and three quarter, but man, Mr. Chunk, and he smoked that jig too. <laughs> Put the hog trough away. This is my second time out on this canal since I've been home in New York. First time out, I was really surprised on the conditions. It seemed like this was a fall pattern out here. Maybe I just got a little too conditioned to uh, California heat and didn't expect this. So this time I came a little more prepared, being my second time out here. Obviously the little top water. I mean, I got my fall stuff. Top water, the jig, seems to be working out so far. Here we go. I finally got him. I knew the one had to be there. Big old jig. Kinda working it slow though. Knew they were here. Gotta figure out how to get them to bite. The other thing I did was uh, change my trailer from the last time. We changed this out from the Rage Craw to uh, just the flapping Hog. Bulkier but less action in the water, which is what we're looking for this time of year at least. There's the fish. Oh, man, how'd he come off? Do it again, dude. You got it that time. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, it's a nice one. I think the jig's the way to go, guys. The jig is the way to go. That's a good kayak bass, too. If we were in our fake tournament. It's a long one. It's got a jacked up. He's, ooh, he's jacked up. That's a weird looking fish. It's got a big old bucket though. Oh well. Glad I put the jig on today. Spike. Oh, what? Alright, here was gonna be another bait if they were biting the jig and uh, any guesses, any guesses if they're biting the jig? Like they are Ned Rig, yes, Ned Rig. A bunch of fish here, dude. There we go. We knew the Ned Rig had to work. Not a bad one. Gosh, I love it when a plan works out. And good old Ned Flanders. The weedless presentation, because there is a ton of grass here. Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, dude, that's a bite. The only problem is this jig is so big. I think it's hard for like the little 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches to get it. I wanted to use a smaller jig like the uh, little Kitek, but the weed guard on those isn't big enough to handle all the grass around here. So I had to go with a bigger hack attack jig. That's the only other jig I had. Much bigger profile. I mean, it's working out so far. I think we're going to definitely miss a few more bites too with it. There's a bite. Where are we we're supposed to be? Alright, got her. 
old jiggy. It's another nice one too. I'd say the jig bite's on. Chunky. I'm seeing a bunch of little shad, but I'm definitely seeing more little bluegill. I think that's what this jig is imitating, these tiny bluegill. Nice one. Dude. Jig bite is on. Chunky. Just fat fish. Just a better profile. It's the right color. Now that trailer lasted like four fish, so that's the good news. The bad news is only got one pack. One pack. Should be able to make them last. Little half ounce hack attack jig. Keep the entire weed guard on. Don't trim any of that weed guard off. It's a Yamamoto flapping hog. It's a perfect size for this particular jig. Almost thread the entire thing on there. Slide that up. That is the deal right there. Got her. <laughs> oh, man. This is the bite right here. Like, this is the bite. Look at the size of this fish. Look how fat that fish is. These look like pre-spawn fish, but they're fall fish. They're fall feeding fish. Ooh, look at him. He's got a crawfish down his throat. The jig imitates bluegill. Well, apparently it's crawfish too. Man, that is so crazy. That looks like a pre-spawn fish. Like 100% looks like a pre-spawner. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's got the lipstick and everything. Like I want to throw a frog up in those lily pads and throw some top water, but they are so keyed in on this jig. Like tell you what, it doesn't happen often. I'm not even going to say this was truly intentional, but this is like the bait. Whether it's the size, the color, the profile, I think we just have a lot of the right stuff correct right now. And I mean, they're they're hitting it hard. They're they're eating it good. Look at them. Look at all the little bass following the jig. And we've noticed that with other baits too, when they're like keyed in on a certain bait, like the little ones will follow it in. I noticed that with a popper this year, when they were really biting a popper, you'd have like so many little bass follow the popper. Right there. <laughs> well, finally got a little guy in the jig. Dude, these are all insanely fat fish though. I think you guys can agree with me. So fat. The fall feed is on. There we go. There we go. Another one. Man, how'd I hook him like that? Another fall fatty. Dang it, dang it, dang it. It's like a five pounder right there. It's a big one. Right there. Oh my God, I got it. I can't believe that fish. No, no, that was him. No. Oh man, that couldn't have worked out any better. I saw him, I moved away, made the cast towards him, and he ate it. I mean, that never happens. How'd he come off? I mean, if that isn't evidence enough that they want this jig, like, that never happens. Okay, so here's, I got a problem right now. Got multiple problems, but I'll tell you the problem. It's not even a problem. I think I mentioned that I'm gonna try to explore some new bodies of water while I was home. This canal's five minutes from my house, and it's fishing good. So my whole uh, going to explore new new bodies of water this trip home 
I don't know. You don't leave fish to find fish. And that's exactly what I would be doing if I abandoned this canal. It is longer too. I have a few spots I haven't explored yet, but they're biting the jig this good. Getting some random frogfish here and there. Like, how do we leave? That's why. Don't you take it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for not taking my jig. Oh no, I saw that one. Yep, saw that one. Big old pike. Big old pike coming, got it. Surprisingly, I think if we've caught four or five pickerel slash pike on our trip here, and that's the first one that broke me off. Hmm. Oh well. I think I got more jigs. I hope I've got more jigs actually. I do. Thank you, thank you. Why does that seem to always happen? Oh, it's a big one. I'm telling you, like, every time, I've seen like, I've had a lot of bites where I've just like kind of changed sides and I'll get a bite. Look at the spots on that one. It's got some freckles. Chunky fish. What a jig bite. Good one. It's a big one actually. Check that one out, folks. Big jig catches the big girl. And a solid one. Fished this area earlier this morning, but there wasn't really any current. I think they definitely opened up one of the locks because it's just pushing through. Helps set that fish up on that piece of wood. No, there's a giant right there. I see a four pounder right to my left. Let's get out of here. We're gonna try this again. Let's see if we can get him to bite. Let's not lose this one if he bites. Here we go. I think that's, that's a good one. I don't know if that's the one we saw though. I don't think that's the one we saw. That's a quality fish. <laughs> Stuck him pretty good. Sometimes you just gotta get jiggy with it. It's a good one, I think. Oh, no, no. No, no, it's a pike. Don't break me. Don't break me. No, no, he's gonna break me. Thank you, sir. Quick release, and you got me keep my trailer. <laughs> Alrighty guys, about one o'clock. I think that is gonna do it for today's video. Man, what a fun day. Yesterday obviously was tough and it was a sad day for multiple reasons, but uh, I'm glad we made our way back to the canal. Last time we were here, which is just a few days ago, we got on a really good frog bite. That really wasn't the case today. The temperature really dropped. The last time we were here, it was 74 degree water temps. It started out at 64, it's 68 now. I think that really helped the bite because all these fish today that I was catching, big old bellies. They were feeding up on crawfish, bluegill. I saw tons of gizzard shad in here. Definitely felt like 
a fall day of fishing. Man, what better way to catch him than on a jig? Almost didn't even bring a jig rod. I thought we were gonna whack him on the frog again, but we brought the jig rod. We got the Corrado K, 85 to one. We've got 20 pound tactical key line on there, fluorocarbon. And uh, we got the Strike King Hack Attack jig, half ounce, Okeechobee craw color. And then what I really think helped the bite for me was adding a big old Yamamoto flapping hog trailer. Not as much action as like a rage crop, but has that big beefy profile. Good jig for grass fishing and especially fishing around has some heavy cover because we were throwing this into some wood when we had to. Glad we came to the canal, salvaged a tough video. Another solid day in New York. Couldn't leave you guys hanging with a one fish catch video that's just not acceptable. As always, thanks for watching, for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.